Hey, what's up everybody? Okay, so yesterday I did a video on the top six fish that you shouldn't try to eat. Just don't even try. It's just fish I don't like to eat and I don't think anybody else really likes to eat. They're just not enjoyable and they're just, there's better fish out there. But on this video, I wanna talk about the top six fish that you should try to eat. Fish that I enjoy eating, fish that are the top like game species around here. So I'm gonna talk about the top six saltwater fish that I enjoy eat, that I like, and you should probably try. So in this video, that's what we're talking about. Here we go. What's up guys? Okay, I'm Jack the Yak Motley. I'm the dude that's always catching random stuff off kayaks and doing really weird tests on the internet and I'm here to talk about my favorite six fish that I like to eat and I'm gonna be over here at this table starting from the top that is if these clouds will come back in and I can get that haze again because it's really bright out there so the number six fish that I think that is something everybody should you know target is flounder flounder is a good fish they're usually all over the Gulf Coast they're readily accessible to find catch and clean they taste great and they're in a lot of the restaurants especially here on the Gulf Coast they basically look like a doormat you catch them like you know around the rocks and the grass flats and you know they migrate up and down the coast sometimes you even catch them in the Gulf they're just a good game species that's great to eat and they basically make the bottom of my list because they just don't set my taste buds aflame, you know what I mean? Now it brings me to number five fish. And it's a favorite for a lot of the people here on the Gulf Coast. It's the cobia. The cobia run happens like March through like April where they come migrating down the coast in herds. They flood the wrecks. You see the cobia boats with the towers going up and down the beach. It is insanity, especially if you're a kayaker trying to get out. Right, right. Get back. There you go. Nice stick. All right, throw him in the boat. Woohoo! All right, that is a beast. <laughs> I'll have to pull some ice out to get him in there. <laughs> We're gonna have to pull everything out of the cooler to get him in. <laughs> this is a pretty cool fish. This thing is huge. This thing's part whale. Yeah, that's a good one. He had a good. That's a good hook set, right? There. That stakes for days, right there. That's a good one. That's a good cobia, right there. That's what we were after today. They're huge. They get 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds, and they can provide a lot of meat. Big cobia steaks. Some people wrap them in bacon with Worcestershire sauce. They're excellent. I have one in the freezer right now that I've yet to cook. You usually catch them around the wrecks or just floating up and down the beach. You can see them. You throw in front of them and whammo. Cobia, cobia for days. All right, so the next fish that I want to talk about is the pompano. I can't leave that fish out. This fish is a delicacy here on the Gulf Coast uh, from like March into the, you know, the late spring, summer. They're running up and down all over the beach. They're just coming in droves. They're not a huge fish, but they taste amazing. Bama Beach Bum over there in Orange Beach. Check his channel out, Bama Beach Bum. He's pretty much the pompano fishing expert over there. Makes a full-time living like crushing pompano. They taste amazing. They're really good on the charcoal grill. Here is where we cook them on the charcoal grill. It's just so good. But don't overlook those guys. They're not gonna make the top of my list because they're so plentiful and you can usually catch them on an afternoon with some fish bites. So they make, you know, this spot on the list instead of like the top three. Taste wise, they would probably be top three. But the fact that they're not really hard to catch um, makes them not quite as much of a delicacy as my top three picks. But they're up there, they're really good. I, this is a really good fish. Don't be afraid to go after them. All right, so my next favorite fish is the snapper. Snapper, people go crazy for snapper here on the Gulf Coast. Uh, all the way around to Louisiana, all the, all the wrecks. Snapper season is huge. And when you wanna see chaos at the boat ramp, it's snapper season. They're big, they're red, they're beautiful. They taste amazing and they're pretty easy to catch. You just throw a big hunk of meat down there and they hit it. We've even caught them on bananas. Brant, angler up, he caught one on a banana, which shows you they're not that hard to catch. A lot of people overthink catching snapper, but they're usually everywhere. Now you can even catch them in the bays, all over the place. Hook in, ready to rock and roll. We're just gonna toss it over, kind of let it free line down like this. See what happens. Oh, got him, got him, fish on, fish on the banana, fish on the banana. I got him. Oh, dude, he hammered it. He hammered it right here beside the boat. Oh man, that's a good one. 
That's a good one. Oh man, he's gonna he's gonna take me to the reef. Crap. Uh, that's a good one. Come on, buddy. Come on, babe. I gotta get the net. Come on, buddy. Ah. Woo oh, banana just got him. Check him out, guys, right here. And they make one of my top spots for fish you should try to target and eat snapper, snapper throats, snapper any which way you want on the half shell, whatever. Great fish to try. And believe it or not, they fight pretty hard. I mean, they're studs, the big ones to get off the bottom, they're studs, I'm telling you, they're, they're hoss, they got big tails and they're strong. So number three, number three is one of my favorite fish. They're huge, they're strong, they're pretty, and that's the redfish. Believe it or not, to catch a legal redfish now is really harder than catch a trophy redfish because it was like 18 to 27 here on the Gulf Coast or here in Florida. Um, it's uh, 18 to 27, you can keep one a day. It used to be two and you, you almost got to target that size because you know, the bull reds, they migrate in in the winter and they stay until about March, especially in a three mile bridge and a deep spot and you can catch 10 a night and they'll pull you forever. I mean, these things are beasts, they're strong, but to catch one that's legal size, it's not the mating size, the egg layers, which is at 18 to 27, I don't think they're really in that, uh, that size range for very long and they can be kind of hard to catch and the limit's only one but the meat you get on these things is amazing fried redfish baked redfish they're it's an amazing it's an amazing dish it's one of my favorite um, not to mention they're beautiful so redfish if you can get them if you can catch them usually on the grass flats and and you know the rocks along the shore you can catch some legal size redfish but you gotta almost target legal, legal size redfish because if you go out with hog legs, mullets, and big baits, you're gonna get the bruisers and you can't keep those. Um, and I don't know why anybody would keep the big ones because usually the big ones are full of worms and they're, yeah. But the ones that are that 18 to 27, it's great size fish. It's great tasting. So this brings me to my number two pick, okay? A number two pick for fish here on the Gulf Coast is the black tip shark. Black tip shark, guys. It's like where a T-bone meets airplane brake. Live by an airport, guys. They come over, it just happen. Black tip shark is right where a fish meets a T-bone steak. And let me tell you, T-bone steak slash fish, it's the best thing you're gonna taste. It's just amazing. They got a good consistency. They, they just taste, they cook well on a charcoal grill and you can seize them all kinds of ways. You can you can do a lot with a black tip shark. They're still alive, look at that. That is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Look at that one, that was, let's touch it. What? <laughs> that is nuts. <laughs> They're all over the Gulf Coast and let me tell you something, it's like killing a deer. These things are huge, you get a lot of meat from them. And, uh, but you gotta skin them really fast, clean them real fast without ammonia setting because they urinate through their skin. But they are a great fish to chase. And they're, <laughs> they're one of the hardest fighting fish out there. Okay, so this brings me to my personal favorite fish on the Gulf Coast, salt water, pretty much anywhere that it's short range boat capabilities. We're talking zero to three miles out. That's the black fin tuna. So nothing gets me more excited than a black fin tuna. No, he's There's still there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh. I got you. Check it out. Jack's got a big tuna on. On a top water. On a top oh, water. There's one fish that I would just sink my teeth in without cleaning or nothing. It's the black fin tuna. They're amazing. They're built like missiles slash footballs. You can eat them completely raw. We actually have a pokey salad we made completely raw with a black fin tuna I caught uh, earlier this year. I'm gonna link that right here. I just get really excited when I catch these things. It's like, you don't even need to cook them. You just slice them up and you get your taste buds watering. I mean, these things, I'm getting hungry just trying to think about these things. I mean, you're gonna get like, they got like 30 pounds. You're gonna get quite a lot of meat off of them. And uh, they just, it's just Worcestershire sauce and just roll with it. But the downside of them is that the meat doesn't freeze very well. There's a lot of protein in there. And if you ever get a chance to try one, it's great. 
but they're not quite as good as yellowfin tuna, but they're both really good. And for what we got here on the Gulf Coast, you can actually just roll off the beach sometimes and catch them. And especially in a kayak. I, Rob actually caught one out of the kayak and some of my buddies have caught some out of kayaks. I've had to catch them on boat. But here's some footage right here of Rob catching one. I mean, a few hundred yards off Pensacola Beach, so it can be done. All right, so I wanted to go through those because I get a lot of questions about what fish are good to eat, what should I be targeting, what is out there, what's a new thing that I should taste. I believe that you should try everything out there to see if you like them. Because like, I never thought I would like Bonita, as in the little toonie, before I tried it, and I tried it, and they're not bad at all. The legend wasn't true. So I believe test them all, but my idea with these two videos, this one and the other video that I posted yesterday, is that I want to just put my opinion out there of the good and the bad. So, so you guys can just have kind of a bouncing ball board on there, and you might not even, uh, and you might not even agree with what I'm saying. But this is my opinion, and I had to say on the Gulf Coast, my favorites, my not favorites. All right, so I hope you guys like this video. If you've got anything to add, comment down below because we all have differences in opinions. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hey guys, I'll see you tomorrow. See you later. Throw him in the boat. I don't want to hit the line. Listen, hold on. If you want to let it be flowers, waiting around the bend, baby, let's just be Good time. Good day, baby. I want to stay like this forever. Woo. I want to stay right here you with you. Somewhere. I want to stay Damn. right here with you. All right, Jack. How would that feel? That was fun. I just got a big cobia. Brand's got a cobia. We've got we've caught as many amberjacks as we possibly could catch. We really want an, an African pop nowhere before we leave. But it's been an amazing day, guys. Amazing. There's like so many fish behind the boat. It's like just which one you want to catch. I'm ready to go home and get Samantha to cook the. I'm ready to go home and get Samantha to cook this cobia. Pretty pumped.